Hello random viewers and welcome to another Kerbal Space Program video. Uh, this is some episode of my career mode. I've definitely lost track since I have not uh, been playing it very much. Alright, so we have some things to do today, I think. Let's see, what do I have? Well, yeah. Um, they want me to do all this stuff, which I should do at some point. But I think I need bigger transmitters still. Or did I get those? How, what's the range on those things? So this antenna is pretty good. This one gives 15G, this one also gives 15G. I like how extendable that thing is. So, yes. Today, we need to launch our Duna Ascent vehicle. Here we go. This needs to go up to the Ares ship. Let's see, I need to make sure it's completely drained of fuel. It does have mono propellant, but I think that's fine. And what I'll do is I'll give it some longer range transmitters. Or will I? I don't know. Oh, that's right, the aerodynamics of this thing were weird. But that's fine, we can just jettison the fairing on re-entry, I think. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to check that. But yes, we need to put some of these, two of these specifically, onto the station. That way, I can do stuff. We can go and look at that. Um, here is our ship. It is right there. Ares ship. Fly it, please. Alright, so yeah, here it is. Those things need to dock here and here. We need two of them. And we need a way to get higher power antennas. Oh yes, I remember how I'll do that. What I need is um, an extra section back here for like extra fuel. That's what I want to do. And other refueling as well, I think, is what I need. So today, yes, we are going to um, we're going to finish refueling and send up an extra tank. Okay, I made it to orbit, and now what I'm doing is a small course correction maneuver. And once we're done with that, we're going to go watch our other stage burn up. We have to do this very quickly because it's burning up now, which is annoying. I'll, sh I'll show you the modifications I made to this ship here in a second. But first I want to do that. That's good enough. And then we'll switch to that. And we'll watch it burn up. So yeah, it still has some fuel left. I could probably have drained it even further, but yeah. No control of its own. We will physics time accelerate and watch it explode. Okay, it looks like some stuff might actually explode. I sure hope so. Yep, here we go. That was an engine, I think. There went something else, that was another engine. Is anything else gonna explode? That one engine looks like it might. Come on. No, we're through the worst of it, that's all we lost. That's unfortunate, I wanted to see more explode. And there we are docked. So I line it up so that the antenna is pointed where engine exhaust is not going to hit it. I'm now going to extend these antennas. I realize that they're overlapping some solar panels, but that's fine. I'm going to uh, disable these RCS ports because I don't really want them firing ever. And now this ship should have the range to actually do what it needs to. Um, this stage will be decoupled, and this will return, but this is going to stay here and be extra fuel for the main uh, ship. 
What I can do now, though, is transfer some of this fuel into here. That should be good for a little while. It can keep its monopropellant for deorbiting. And then monopropellant, where is monopropellant kept? Lots of spots. Let's open that up. And let's pump that full of monopropellant then. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll do fuel pumping on my own. But yeah, I'm going to refill this ship as much as possible. Okay, so we've now completely refueled this. Um, it will destroy all chances of this thing being recovered, since I'm going to remove all of, since I've removed all of its fuel, but I think that's fine. Uh, so yeah, now I'm going to quick save, like that, and we will decouple that node. Let's shift back over to this thing. This little bit right here does have solar panels of its own, that's good. We're going to bump off of that, and then we're going to head back down to Kerbin with this. I saved it just enough monopropellant. Uh, it has no fuel of its own, like it's out. So what I can do is this, and that should lower our periaps into the atmosphere, assuming it was actually firing. There we go. Oh yeah, that's very functional. And we'll leave that behind, and I'll come back when this thing starts to burn up. Well, something did make it back. Monopropellant tanks and thrusters. The probe core survived. And some batteries. It's actually not bad. We might get some funds from that. Well, I mean, we'll definitely get some funds, but I mean, some noticeable ones. 3,000, that's not terrible. Doesn't begin to cover the launch. Okay, I'm going to, uh, oh! I want to upgrade the runway at some point. So please close. Let's upgrade that. And it should make it a little bit more usable. I actually did get my space shuttle to fly by using, uh, here I'll show you, by using um, liquid fuel boosters. And with that, and that really does help a lot. What are you doing, Emma? Emma just decided to show up. Emma, no, don't hit my microphone. She's hitting my microphone with her tail. Emma. Stop. Stop. Nope. Now she's after my microphone cord. Stop it. Okay. Yeah, so I added liquid fuel boosters, and that significantly helped, and I made it to orbit and things. But I'm not going to fly this. Can you please get out of my way, cat? Now she's between the screen. No, not that button. And me. So yeah, it was hard to see. Now she's jumped down. But yeah, that helps a lot, and it should be able to land on runways now. However, I realized... This is an expensive ship to fly, and I have a much better thing. I've got the Scorpius 01, and the Scorpius, it's, um, I, I'd forgotten about this nice little thing, but I had also forgotten that it's incredibly cheap to launch because I recovered the bottom stage. Incredibly cheap. So... Yeah, this will probably take the place of a space shuttle, just because it's so cost-effective. So, yeah. Okay, I think we need to upgrade the space center. By doing that, it might allow us to communicate with Eve. Why can it not, though? Give me a second. Because we're not turned properly. Oh, or it's orange like that because it's a weak connection. But by doing that, I can switch over to EVE and actually have some connection to this lander that I have. Here, let's fly this. Let's see if it has any kind of connection at all. Yes, it's poor connection, 34%. But 
Let's see, transmit data, acquire complete. No, we don't want to do any of that. But now we can talk to Kerbin with this thing, which is good. I'm going to see if I can... I'm going to turn off debris. There we go. Let's try to see if we can get any kind of connection with the Marius 1. It's got nothing. Why is that? Does it have its antenna extended? Yes. Does it have electrical power? Yes. So I just found out there are actually two different types of antennas. There's relays and then direct ones. And I've been using only direct ones and that's caused some problems. But yeah, this has relays uh, and the thing to direct is you can only communicate with other... You can communicate with anything else but nothing can bounce off of you. So that satellite I have in orbit of EVE only has direct ones so it can communicate with the Kerbal Space Center but it cannot connect with the uh, probe that it's supposed to on the ground. I was not aware of this. Um, I might just make all types of antennas relays because that's just annoying. Yeah, I might see about doing that, but uh, it, it might just be easier to do this. We'll see. Alright, it actually looked like it worked. These satellites only had direct antennas, but now they're able to communicate with the Ares ship, and it can also communicate with them. So that's really good. Let's uh, try going over here. Yes! Look at that. Can I... Good. Yeah, because I always place two antennas, and the way I see it, even if one is supposed to be direct and can only communicate with one thing, um, that shouldn't be the case, because if you've got two of them, one can receive, the other can transmit back. So I'm going to log pressure data and transmit that. Log temperature. I don't know why that's changed. Transmit that, please. And what do you say? Great, and I make tons of money from that. There we go. So, that has fixed that issue, and yeah, considering... Consider it cheating all you want. There's two antennas on each ship. They should be able to relay information. I don't see the point in only being, being able to receive and not... Yeah, just... No. Nope. Uh, it might not be completely realistic, but it's realistic in, to me, and... Well, there you go. So now that that contract is dealt with, I can deal with the next one, which is to send some tourists to uh, Minmus. So I will do that. Hey, look, it's Kurt Kerman. Um, probably put into the name generator purposefully for uh, Kurt J. Mac. That's kind of funny. Um, I'm pretty sure I have a Kerbal in there somewhere. I've never come across them. But, uh, yeah, that's because... I did a competition thing. The R&D flag, if you've ever seen it. Where is it? Toggle flag. I don't think I use it. But anyways, yeah, I designed that one, so they put my name in the Kerbal Generator. Never come across it, though. And Yuzochi assures me that if he ever does, he will... Is it Yuzochi? Might be. That he will uh, thoroughly destroy and torture poor Walker Kerman, which is absolutely hilarious. So... Yeah, that's a funny thing. But anyways, yeah, fun to come across one of those uh, Kerbals uh, that it was put in there purposefully and not just random. Alright, there we are. Landed. So, I accepted a contract to get some uh, seismic readings at these points, which we're pretty close to. However, I didn't fly the ship particularly well, so the fuel is a bit worrying. Um, I'm not sure how much it... 
It wouldn't take very much to return because it's Minmus, but it could be difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some science and then see about getting over there and just see how much fuel I have left at that point. Guess what else I just realized? I forgot to put a seismometer on the ship, so that's funny. Well, even without a seismometer, um, it's still decent. So this is a second Taurus landing, so that's pretty good. So um, it's still a ton of science that I can get from this mission, so that's pretty good. Okay, I'm going to do a quick test. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump up really quick. Observe Mystery Materials Bay. Okay, recycle that. Never mind. I don't need any of that science. SAS on, please. And eh, whatever. I'm not going to cheat and grab extra science. I mean, it's not cheating, but yeah. It's just not necessary. So to go back to Kerbin, I need to go, yeah, towards the 90 degree line, which is this way. It's always crazy going straight on your gravity turn almost immediately. But you can with such low gravity. Anyways, I'll be back when we get back at Kerbin. Well, there's our landing, so it looks like they survived. Oops, I should have hit recover vessel. Well, I can do that from the tracking station. Uh, recover. Great. That's a lot of science. And some reputation for the Kerbals. And that should have gotten us a ton of science. Of, uh, what's it called? Yep, complete travel itinerary. Yep. Yep. And good. Wow, lots of reputation there. So now, what? Uh, science. Yeah, I think I'm going to get this. This will get me a bigger heat shield, which will be less likely to break. Better landing gear, pretty nice drogue chute, and some other landing gear. Great. So that should help with some other things. Ooh, an inflatable heat shield. That'd be great. That is what that's called, right? I don't know. Um, yes, but thank you so much for watching. Please do like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me all your ideas in the comments. Uh, if you've got other games you think I'd like to play, please give me ideas for that. Anything and everything that you can think of. Uh, yeah, I think that's everything, so I hope you all have a very nice day.